One of the best features of Genshin Impact is how often a player can ask, hey, what's over there, and have the answer be, something. Open world games can easily feel empty or dead, because if the player can go anywhere, they have to be able to do something interesting everywhere. Regardless of size, a game world is only as good as the things in it. And that's where Genshin Impact excels, because it's so common in this game to expect nothing and find something. Back when I was actively playing, I remember there was one night I decided I was going to loot every treasure chest in the city of Mondstadt. Just scour the place top to bottom, wall to wall, and find every last secret. But then the other day, when I was laughing about how you can just climb stained glass, I found this. The developers at MiHoYo clearly thought while making this game, yeah, most players will never think to go these places, but let's put something there for the ones who do. This is kind of a bad example because why didn't I check the highest point of a major city, but you get what I'm saying. I feel like I'm getting off topic. The music that plays when you're in the city of Mondstadt doesn't have to be excellent. It's set dressing. If it's easy to ignore, it's doing its job. So even though I knew the music well, I didn't really pay attention to it until I listened to the soundtrack outside of the game. Even though I adore Yu Peng Chen's work, I didn't expect that if I took a closer look there would be something to find. I was wrong. The track that ultimately caught my attention is called The City Favored by Wind. It's very unassuming. In fact, it's the piece that played at the beginning of this video, and I doubt much of anyone stopped and thought, wait, this is amazing, or recognized it and thought, oh my god, it's my favorite track. It's designed to be pleasant, atmospheric background noise. That's why it's surprising to me that it's so beautifully made. Let's tear it to pieces. The piece starts out with a steel drum and some rippling mallets, and I'll be honest, I don't really know what to make of this. The melody doesn't really match the rest of the piece, and the instrumentation doesn't match Mondstadt's European inspiration. I can't offer much insight here because I don't know what's happening, but it sounds nice. For me, things get interesting in the second part. We have a leading line on accordion, an acoustic guitar playing broken chords, and a triangle and shaker tapping out a simple rhythm. Together, these voices create a light, carefree tone that evokes the gentle wind theme of Mondstadt. At first glance, it looks like we're in F major. The piece starts on an F major chord, and most of the chords feature F more than any other note. Finally, and most importantly, if I add an F major chord to the end of this phrase, it sounds like the piece could end there. But there's one little problem. Well, five little problems. The seventh degree of F major is E natural, but there are five E's in these first 12 bars, plus the pickup, and all of them are flat. We're definitely in the key of F, but the E notes are consistently too low for F major, and the A notes are consistently too high for F minor. This is actually F mixolydian, which is very similar to F major, except that it has E flat instead of E natural. Different scales that start on the same note are called modes. We'll use the rainbow to represent F mixolydian mode, since that's the one we're using. Any notes from outside the mode's scale will break the pattern with less common colors. If you haven't heard the word mixolydian before, that's because outside of jazz and some pop, almost all music is major or minor. Mixolydian is characterized by sounding major most of the time, but having the slightest bit of drama in unexpected places because of that one lowered note at the top of the scale. Not to be pessimistic, but life is full of suffering, and true happiness comes from persevering despite it, not from eradicating it. So I'm a big fan of Mixolydian. And chances are, you are too. But we're not quite done talking about the key. We've got some D flats at the very end of this 8 bar period, even though there are D naturals earlier on that are perfectly in key. In the second phrase of this seemingly happy and peaceful section, it shifts fully into F minor. We have a B flat major chord here, and then with just a tiny change, it drops to a B flat minor chord. If that sounds familiar, we saw exactly the same thing happen in my Snow and Summer video. But where in Snow and Summer the B flat major chord is out of place, now it's the B flat minor chord that doesn't belong. 
One of the nice things about the city favored by wind is that it has smooth voice leading. That means the chord progression is arranged in such a way that the notes barely change from measure to measure. Don't worry if the chord names above the music don't mean anything to you. What's important here is that every chord in this piece shares at least one pitch with the chord that came before it. So we get to see how subtle changes to chords can create really nuanced emotional landscapes. Take a listen to that with the accordion and percussion added back in. Okay, let's move on to a more intuitive topic. Flow. The city favored by wind has a sort of relay race going on between the instruments. First, this melody is on accordion over guitar. Then the flutes take over, the accordion falls to a supporting role, the guitar pieces out, and double bass comes in. The flutes and double bass have warmer and darker voices than the accordion and guitar, so the piece feels fuller now. <music> Lastly, the high strings, still warmer and darker, start to play the F Mixolydian scale. Partway through, they switch to F minor, nicely summarizing the full journey of the piece. So, to recap, this piece is in a weird mode, it changes modes for only a couple measures at a time, and it's one big crescendo from start to finish. So, how, again, is this background music? Well, the guitar picks each note instead of strumming full chords. The accordion doesn't even really have chords, just two pitches at a time that don't really move. Smooth voice leading. There's no harmony above or below the melody. The texture comes from changing instruments instead. And the shaker and triangle are more there to keep time than to drive the rhythm. Even though this piece has a lot of detail and complexity for its one minute runtime, it's designed to stay in its lane and not draw attention to itself. There's another way to enjoy this piece, too. One of the fun things about Genshin Impact's soundtrack is that many of the daytime tracks have nighttime counterparts. The City Favored by Wind is one such track. Its complement, Another Day in Mondstadt, is played on just a piano, clarinet, and harp. The time signature here looks scary, but it's really just another way to write what we were already hearing. The last piece was up-tempo, so it made sense to count the beats quickly, but this version feels so much more relaxed that a four-bar phrase in The City Favored by Wind manifests here as just one measure. Before, to count a phrase, we counted four bars of three beats. In 12-8, we count four beats of three eighth notes. The easiest way to think of 12-8 is, it's just 4-4, four four, but each beat is split into three notes instead of two. Does... does that make sense? No? Well, I'll go into more detail if it comes up in a future video, but it's really not the focus here. Okay, let's wrap this up. Unlike the city favored by wind, which hid from me for quite some time, the first time I heard Another Day in Mondstadt, I stopped what I was doing and just listened. The piano is resonant, angelic, and vaguely sad. But since the melody is still that even rise through the Mixolydian scale, it has a surge of hope in it as well. Listen for the difference between the third and fourth chords, and you'll hear that melancholy shift from major to minor. If you need any more proof of the sublime beauty hidden in the daytime track, it's on full display here. I hope you love it as much as I do.
A very special thank you to my first ever patrons. Please join them in supporting the channel if you like what I do and it won't hurt you. Regardless of whether you pledge, you'll find public updates on works in progress on my Patreon and on my Twitter, at Jonathan Baruch. If you made it this far, tell me in the comments if you got misty-eyed listening to the last piece, because I sure did. You know, before I listened to it a dozen times to make this video. See you next time.